Welcome to Allies or Enemies. I'm Jess. And I am Sean. And today we are talking about Dog Park. And we're going to be talking about both the base game and its expansion, New Tricks. And full disclosure, both games were provided to us by the publisher for review. And even fuller disclosure, I love dogs. I love dogs so much. The games were designed by Lottie and Jack Hazel, and it is all about getting different types of dogs and taking them for walks, giving them treats and toys along the way. So before we get too into it, let's take a look at how it plays. Each round starts with three available dogs, which everyone will take turns bidding on. If you bid the most points, you get that dog and spend your bid. If not, you take another dog, but you only need to spend one point. After two rounds of bidding, you select which of the dogs in your kennel you'll walk, and you pay resources to put them on a lead, and you head off to the park. During the walking phase, players take turns moving one to four spaces along the path and taking the bonuses they land on, including a finishing bonus, which is better the earlier you leave the park. Then you do it all again. After four rounds of bidding, choosing, and walking, you gain points for breed types you have a majority in, any endgame bonuses on your dogs, leftover resources, and points from an objective card you chose at the start of the game, and then the greatest dog walker is named. And so Dog Park is interesting in that it is kind of a couple different games smushed together, it feels like. So you've got these very different separate phases. First, you've got the bidding on dogs phase, and then you've got the walking phase. And so let's first of all just talk about that bidding phase. And I think the, there's a few interesting things about it. It's because it's it's a little secret bidding where you've got that dial, which feels a bit like um, they use a similar thing in the Furnace expansion as well. But you've got that dial for how you bid. But I think the more interesting thing is what you're bidding is your points. So every time you spend a bit extra on a dog, you're losing points. And this is one of those games where you win by having the most points. Yeah, and it makes it an interesting decision of when you're going to spend your points to get the different value dogs, because the different breeds are worth different like points at the end of the game. So do you spend points now to try and get majority of those kind of breeds so you get more points later? And it can be tough, especially at the beginning. You don't have a lot of points to spend. So it is you don't really want to jump into continually spending all the points you have just for the later reward. Yeah, and I think it could really be a strategy as well just, just to always spend one. You always have to spend at least one point, unless you have no points, and then you just get whatever the dog is no one else wants. But generally, you're always going to spend at least one point every turn. So spending that extra two or three in a game where you get like 50, 60 points maybe, if you're spending two points every turn, that's really gonna add, add up and bite you. So it's, it is interesting because that math, you can't even do that math one to one too because you're not sure like, oh, if I get that breed, if I get whatever that top breed is and I get eight points versus that one point at the bottom, that's really worth it. But did I have to spend eight points on the way? And then the other part of it is the walks. And the walks works a lot like kind of a mini parks or Takedo where you're just moving forward and picking up the stuff. And that plays quite a bit different too. And what, what did you think about that part? Yeah, I like that part because you can always, the decisions of what resources you want to gather along the way will be influenced by which dogs you have available because you're going to have to spend the resources to take them on a walk. And also you get to see what the next dogs are too. So I think that really influences your decision of, oh, I'm going to really need a lot of balls. My dogs love having balls. And so I need to make sure to stop on that. But you are, you do want to finish quickly too, because you get that point bonus if you are out of the park first and you lose a point if you're out of the park last. Mm -hmm. So it's balancing again, points and in this case, resources. Yeah, I do like the, the bit about the, because you do, you need the stuff for the dog. So I do like that, that you got to look ahead and be planning ahead for that next turn, but you don't know what dogs you're going to get for the next turn because then you're going to have to do that bidding. So that also influences that, that you're like, I got all these sticks, but I don't have a, none of my dogs like sticks. What dogs don't like sticks? It's crazy. But none of my dogs, these are squeaky toy only. These are fancy dogs who only want squeaky toys. Um, and yeah, that that is... It's simple, like all of the parts of this game I think are pretty simple, but they're tied together enough that there's like that, that little bit 
um, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and I think it reminds me also of wingspan as well because the dogs have different powers. And so sometimes the powers are when they're going on a walk, sometimes it's end game bonuses as well. And so not only are you deciding when you're getting them about what breed they are, but also what their power is and if you can afford it with the resources. So I think it combines these familiar mechanics that we've seen in other mm -hmm. gateway games just in a, in a really nice way. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like if Furnace and Wingspan and Parks all had kind of a baby. A dog was baby. Like, yeah, a dog. <laughs> oh, if only there was a word for dog babies. <laughs> But, but while it is the, the puppy of those three games, uh, I would say that it is a little bit lighter than any of those. It doesn't quite go as into depth in any of these mechanics as, as each of those does, but it, it touches on all of the different, it's like a little smorgasbord of, of mechanics. Um, but let's talk about the, uh, the components as well, because I think the components are, are definitely a highlight here. Yeah, because this is very much going to appeal to people who really like dogs, and there is a lot of dog art. You know, yeah. all of the cards are different cards. They're all like hand drawn, and they all look really good as well. And I think the meeples, because your your little meeple, even though it's bigger than a meeple, is walking a dog, and you have a little dog one that's screen printed too, which is nice. Yeah, I I think they they did a really good job, really across the board, and even the little things like the um like the the. Th the tray that you put all of your resources in, it's shaped like a bone and that's really nice. And it's got that thing like parks where they got two different trays that you've got your stuff in so they can be in two places on the table. I think that's a great touch The more games should do. Even the box insert I think works well. So I think just overall, there's not really any problems with any of the, the components and that dog art especially really shines. And I will gun for the dogs that are especially cute. If it's big and fluffy, I'm gonna go for that dog. I would rather have a bunch of big fluffy dogs than win the game, I think. But let's look at player count. I've only played this at two players. You've played it solo as well. And at two players, there is a bot player that you add in, but it's really straightforward. So for the first bidding phase, they're always gonna go for the dog that's worth the highest value. And I think that is ne necessary to have competition for those dogs. And so you can still try and bid for it, but you roll a dice for what their value is going to be. So you could risk it of bidding low and hope that you still outbid them, but it might not work out in your favor. I think that does a good job of doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, and it's I like that if you fail in the bid, you only spend one on getting, so you don't have to spend what you bid if you don't win the bid. But it, it is good that it always goes for that highest dog. And a thing that we didn't talk about too is I like that the dogs don't have points on them. Those points shift each time depending on just the breed. So the dogs aren't inherently worth more than other dogs. That changes all the time. But yeah, I, I, th I think that works really well. And it's a fun, it's almost more fun, I think, like rolling the dice than just trying to math out like, oh, okay, she can only spend three, so if I spend four, I'm definitely gonna get it. But with the bot, you never know. They're a real, they're a real wild card. And then for the walk as well, they just, um, you roll the dice as well and they just move that amount. So they can really rush you, or if you're rolling a lot of ones, you can just gather all sorts of resources. Yeah, I think it does a good job of simulating a third player, but with very little upkeep. And it doesn't compete with you for final scores, but it does compete for the breed majorities, which is really important. At two player, it, it just wouldn't be as exciting if you won like half of the breed mm -hmm. majorities. But in terms of three or four player games, I think one of the nice things is I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of extra playtime added because even though there is gonna be more players playing, all of the decisions are really quick. The bidding's really quick, the where you're going is really quick as well. For three players, it's gonna be the same amount of dogs that you have access to, but you're using a real like human player instead of a bot. <laughs> and at four players, you get a fourth dog uh, available to, to bid on. So maybe a little bit more choice in that market for which dog you're bidding for, but you're also gonna be more competition for those breed majorities. Yeah, and we haven't played with three or four, so all of this is just, we're just imagining. But yeah, I agree. It's gonna play just as fast or pretty much just as fast. And I, I would be interested because I feel like it's gonna be probably a slightly more interesting game at three or four players. There is also a solo mode that is kind of a best score mode, but it's definitely a best score plus mode. So in this case, you've got the auto walker, much like two players, but now you've got two of them. 
So they're both going to be going for the best dogs. They're both going to be bidding against you. They're both going to be walking with you along the path, but they don't score any points. You also have a card that you choose, a solo challenge card, and you can pick four different levels of that. And then you're just, you're trying to get stars through both completing the goals on your card and however many points you get at the end of the game. And I, I think it works fairly well, like for a best point mode, it has very little upkeep, which is nice, but it does add a little bit extra than your average just play by yourself and get the points. So you mentioned goal cards, and that leads us into replayability because it reminds me of the achievement cards that you get given in a regular game. At the start of each game, you get dealt two of them, and that will influence a little bit of what direction you're you might go towards. Other things that will change up the feel of each game too is the, the breed values are going to be randomly determined each game, and there are also these forecast cards that come out. And so that might give you bonuses for having different breeds or just little things that each season or not season, I guess it's just like each phase will affect mm -hmm. it a little bit differently. And those forecast cards really can impact your decision making too, because those are pretty big bonuses sometimes. And they can be worth even getting the like lower ranked dogs just to get those big point bonuses. But I think that's most of what we wanted to talk about the base game. So let's jump into the expansion and the expansion adds quite a few things. So the expansion is called New Tricks, and I think it's just come out. And it adds, first of all, a fifth player. So it adds all the stuff that you need for a fifth player, including, I think, a really nice kind of beige colored person. Not enough beige in games. Uh, so it adds the beige person and their dial and ev everything that you need, as well as another slot on the board. So now you're going to be bidding on five cards as well as some extra kind of double layered bits for the walk, for the path. Um, and then also for the path, it adds these cool little kind of overlay things. So it's got another set of cards because there's cards, I don't know if we talked about this, but there's cards that you put out that change what's on the path each time. So they have little bonuses on a few of the spaces and one of the spaces usually will lose its powers. But with this one, it adds these kind of super bonuses that allow you to do some like interesting different stuff and trade stuff to get stuff and get points. And it's it just adds a little bit more, I think, to, to the path. And as the name suggests, it adds tricks. And so how the tricks work are each game, there's gonna be different tricks that get randomly distributed to the different breeds. And so each round, you can have your trainer go on one dog and that dog is going to learn a trick and depending on whether they're at home or whether they're on a walk, they can do the trick action. It always, well, it often costs a resource to do it, but then even after that round, that dog has learned the trick. They don't mm -hmm. lose it. You know, that's how it works with dogs. I Meaning you can keep using those tricks and it can combo in some nice ways. But I would say for the trick element, it's another thing to consider. So if you have only played like a handful of games, I don't think having like that addition is gonna, it might feel a little overwhelming. I think it would be more if you've had like tons of games under your belt, you're really familiar with like a lot of the dogs and the things that they do, that the new tricks and that extra thing that you're considering is worthwhile. Yeah, it's still it's still a, like a very light game, but it, it, it's interesting. And I think partly because it's just physically far, because it goes on top of the board and it feel it feels like a little far away from you but it is just that one more thing. And because it's kind of another similar thing, like your dogs have powers and then you've got the location power, you just have a lot of things to remember about. And it feels like the easiest thing to forget. But yeah, I agree. I think if you played a lot, you're gonna, you've got that other stuff already internalized. You're gonna look at those a bit more. It also has dual breed dogs and it's got just a whole bunch of new dogs. And I really like these new dogs. So it's got some that are rescue dogs, which is awesome. And a lot of those work specifically with the tricks and the new trick powers. But it also has a bunch and their names as well underneath, like they're, um, they all have this little like flavor text thing underneath their names, but it's their dual breed. So I really appreciate that. And they're like extra cute cause they're kind of mutts. So I, I like that part of it a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And we're both gone for those ones because they count for both breed categories. So mm -hmm. you're getting basically two dogs in one. And with the tricks too, if that dog learns a trick, they have learned the trick for both types of breeds as well. So I don't think this is a, you need it right off the top expansion. 
but I do think if you are very familiar with it, or if you just like really love dogs and are really love the game, the rainbow breed dogs do add a lot to it. And I also just noticed while you were talking, looking in the viewfinder, that this makes a like perfect little picture that goes between both boxes. So there is that as well for the new tricks. But overall, who do you think this game is for? Just talking about like the base game without the expansion. I think it's definitely a gateway game. Like we mentioned, it draws from a lot of gateway game mechanics and it's still that gateway level. So it is re relatively light, which is nice in terms of an easy entry, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have like a huge amount of like strategic depth. It is that, that gateway weight for bringing new players in, but it's also for dog lovers because it's all about these adorable dogs and it does a really good job of putting you in a, in a dog world. You wanna get all the dogs and you wanna walk all these dogs. Yeah, it is a gateway game and I think it does a good job at that. I think it does a good job of taking some cool mechanics, smushing them down and kind of squeezing the essence out of those mechanics. And especially the uh, the bidding I think is really interesting that you're spending your points on the bidding. I, th I think that works really well. And that theme is just, it's gonna bring a lot of different people in. I love dogs. I love seeing the dogs. I think. I think the dogs really helps how much I enjoy this game. And gateway game doesn't necessarily mean it's only for new players too, because we do enjoy just playing kind of a lighter game sometimes as well. But it just know that this isn't gonna have those big weighty decisions in it. This isn't gonna be that kind of game. Yeah, and like you say, we do like playing those games because it turns are really quick. It's nice to have mm -hmm. these quick turns that you're still making interesting decisions with a really great theme. And that is it. That is Dog Park and Dog Park New Tricks. Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know in the comments if you've played Dog Park or what your favorite dog themed game is. Or what your favorite dog is. And as usual, please like, subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you next time for another game.